When I thought of this style, I thought of my friend, Bearbell Dressler. So Bearbell, I'm so happy you're here. Tell us how you would describe ornate or ornamental style in your work. I would say that ornate or ornamental design or art is about embellishing something. It's about embellishment. And it's, um, it's definitely not being uh using realism so it's always some kind of stylized mm -hmm. depiction of plants usually uh, i think actually ornamental designs are always inspired by nature in one way or another and they then there can be simplified or or exaggerated or distorted into something that looks not as a, a part from nature almost abstract but it's always something that is meant to make something else a more beautiful and embellished that's how i would define ornate well i i love that you do have that emphasis in your work you you have a love for historic patterns and it shows in everything you do in how you just articulated that in the creation of your own work can you walk us through some of that my interest for historical design it, it started with okay this is gonna sound so nerdy it start it started uh probably with ancient egyptian design <laughs> i've always been such a a nerd about ancient styles especially egyptian and that you would see the lotuses and papyrus and all these things and, and rosettes and those are like the essence of ornamentation in in my mind and so that's how things got started way before I got into surface pattern design. When I got into surface pattern design, I got hooked on a style called Toile de Jouis. And that's more of a narrative, almost like a landscape style. But some versions also have lots of, of tendrils and garlands and sometimes lace and ribbon inside them too. And I think that's kind of what got me uh, going to the next one, which would be Damask and then Indian florals. And then also, ultimately, I ended up being really nerdy about arts and crafts patterns and William Morris, of course. And I think that's when I started to understand, OK, every element needs to have some kind of purpose in a design. And that's that's when I got into that some more. We love yeah. to hear it. I love to hear it. I just feel like it's so refreshing. Your perspective is very atypical, I would say, from most artists that I meet because we just get excited about something and then we just go for it. Whereas I feel that you are excited and you want to learn more and then you dig deeper and then that fuels your creativity. But for someone who is wanting to maybe bring some of this flavor into their work, how could they go about doing that in a very straightforward, simple way? What's the first step you would say? Ornamental inspiration you can find in many different places. I look at uh, museum archives. I buy a lot of books. Somehow I don't want to borrow them at the library. I want to own them. So I buy tons of books. Mm -hmm. All of these ones are, have some kind of, they're about ornamentation in one way or another. <laughs> different wow. styles. Yeah, and so I can just look through those and that's a great tip um, and just observe and see different uh, common denominators, I think, and you will identify that there are some elements that show up over and over again, like acanthus leaves or acorns or rosette motifs and just find the, the elements that kind of trigger you or catch your eye and then see if you can use that in a new way. Uh, I think that's how, how I like to approach this because copying uh, other styles or patterns is, even though they are really old and so you're not really infringing perhaps, it's not a fun way to go about it. You want to study something, find inspiration, and then see, okay, what do I like about this and how can I make my own twist to it? Because even though I'm this history nerd, I also want to make sure that I'm making my mark in history so that I'm like part of history, but 
bringing all you know the classics or the masterpieces and the brilliance from past designs into the future in a new way and that's what designers have always done so I, I like being a part of that chain kind of I believe you are you have a resource that is a great way to get going on looking at a lot of different pattern styles don't you yeah, I do. <laughs> I Like I said, the nerd over here, I uh, wanted to create a type of an encyclopedia where you could look up all of these different pattern styles from different eras and different pattern types and categories and classical motifs. So I created something that I call the Patternpedia. <laughs> This is a, a printed version I'm I'm playing with. I, I don't have this available, but I have the Patternpedia available as a PDF that you can actually sign up to get and get sent to you by email. That is awesome. That'll be an awesome start. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples of what I consider are ornamental designs. And these are patterns that I've created. So these are just six examples of of designs that are inspired by very classical styles. So this one up here is inspired by damask patterns. And it has the this flat design with leaves and branches forms that make up this, this, I don't know, garland or something. And then the same here, the Indian floral inspired design in the center here, it's also made of very simplified and stylized versions or even imaginary versions of flowers and leaves. So I consider this also somewhat ornamental. And then I have this really busy, detailed kind of, it's paisley inspired and it has some paisley shapes here and there, but it, it has a lot of other things. So this is ornamental, you know, really what I would call ornamental. Like this one is, it has this Anthemian motif, which is one of the most common motifs that you would see in ancient Greek art. You can see it on, on urns and vases, for example, and pottery. This example is inspired by Arabesque or Islamic designs. They had this more very symmetrical, almost geometrical uh, style to their designs. And, um, also infused with lots of kind of um, natural organic elements like little twigs and, and 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 sprigs and then this one is inspired by ancient egyptian design it's uh like an overlapping circles pattern that you can find in uh in tombs and on on uh caskets like sarcophagi in ancient egyptian and tombs so that's uh well, overlapping circles you can find in everywhere around the world from all kinds of, of eras. So this is what I would say are um, ornamental designs, just to give you like some typical, typical examples. That was mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Those are beautiful. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Try your hand at this style with a very lesson targeted to do so. Explore this one and so many others in Watercolor Bold. Try it out for free and learn as much as you can.